Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Beyond the Mat with J. Cole Yoga, where today we're talking about the cannabis situation in Canada. Go to www.canada.ca slash en slash services slash health slash campaigns slash introduction dash cannabis dash act dash questions dash answers dot html and you can read this all for yourself but i'm going to read it here so you don't have to you can just listen to me talk question number 31 is where we're at if you haven't seen the other questions or listened to them go back and listen to them subscribe to my channel too while you're at it question 31 why is there a 30 gram limit for pro why is there a 30 gram limit for public possession you can tell i haven't read these yet why is there a 30 gram limit for public possession of cannabis and why is there a seemingly no limit in a private dwelling there is no limit for alcohol. In accordance with advice received from the task force, as well as experience gained from discussions with jurisdictions that have legalized cannabis, the government has proposed that a personal possession limit of 30 grams of legal dried cannabis or equivalent in other cannabis products is a reasonable amount to be carried in public by an adult. This reasonable limit allows adults to carry legal, legal cannabis and cannabis products with them when traveling between private dwellings. That's a little bit over an ounce. That's two grams over an ounce. That's not bad. Although, there are some sick people who consume 30 grams of cannabis a day just to stay alive. And uh, I guess that's kind of keeping them in mind, too. Question 32. How will enforcement work? Will police be able to show up at people's houses unannounced and without a warrant? Good question. Law enforcement officers who suspect that an individual is engaging in illegal production and or sale of cannabis must, under the proposed Cannabis Act, follow all normal law enforcement procedure. This includes obtaining proper judicial authority to enter an individual's private dwelling. So no, they can't just run up in your house because they think you got five plants instead of four. Question 33. What happens if an adult is caught with more than 30 grams of legal cannabis in public? Under the proposed legislation, an adult found by a law enforcement officer to be carrying more than 30 grams of dried legal cannabis or equivalent could face a range of penalties depending on the severity of the infraction. For example, an adult carrying more than 30 grams of dried cannabis or equivalent but 50 grams or less of dried cannabis or equivalent could be, at the discretion of the officer, subject to a ticket of $200. The cannabis over the limit would also be seized for destruction by the law enforcement agency. In other words, they're going to go smoke it. For more serious offenses, such as possessing significantly more than 30 grams, the Crown may choose to prosecute the individual summarily or on indictment. Question 34. Get near the end. Get near the end. Losing my voice again today. Question 34. Are these ticketable offenses considered criminal? Would someone who receives a ticket for cannabis possession over 30 grams of legal cannabis face the possibility of a criminal record and then not be allowed to go into other countries? <gasps> An individual who receives a ticket from a law enforcement officer for public possession of between 30 and 50 grams of legal cannabis would not face criminal record, providing the individual pays the assessed fine within the prescribed time period. Give me your money. Give me your money. That is all they want, us to give them money. This is comparable to receiving a traffic infraction. Although, 35. How does this proposed legislation impose severe penalties on persons who provide cannabis to youth? <clears throat> the proposed Cannabis Act maintains many of the existing prohibitions under the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act regarding selling, producing, importing, and exporting cannabis outside the proposed established regulated system. In addition, the Cannabis Act proposes creating new cannabis-related offenses, targeting those persons who would distribute or sell cannabis to Canadian youth. These new proposed offenses carry a maximum penalty of 14 years in a cage. In addition, the government is proposing updated and strengthened penalties for impaired driving, including the possibility of life imprisonment for most severe offenses. Question 36. How many Canadians have been charged and convicted of simple cannabis possession? More than half of all drug offenses reported by police are for cannabis. In 2014, this amounted to nearly 60,000 offenses reported. Of these, just over 22,000 resulted in charges. The criminal records that result from these charges have serious, lifelong implications for the individuals involved. 
People with criminal records may have difficulty finding employment and housing and may be prevented from traveling outside of the country. Keeping Canadians, especially youth, out of the criminal justice system for simple cannabis possession is a key goal of the legalization and strict regulation of cannabis. Question 37. We're now into international obligations. Does this proposal put Canada in breach of international conventions? The government of Canada takes its international obligations very seriously. Throughout the legislative process, we will continue to communicate our overall objectives for strictly regulating and restricting access to cannabis to the international community, which includes protecting our society from the adverse consequences of illegal drug and combating international drug trafficking. The government will also continue to engage in constructive dialogue with our international partners. That's kind of a vague answer, so like, eh, we're going to talk about it. Question 38. Does the proposal allow import or export of cannabis for non-medicinal purposes? No. Under the proposed Cannabis Act, it will be illegal to import into or export from Canada cannabis and cannabis products, except under very specific circumstances. Import and export of cannabis or cannabis products for medical and scientific purposes will continue to be allowed with the proper permits issued by the government. In addition, industrial hemp will be allowed to be imported and exported. Woohoo! The Canada Border Services Agency, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and local police forces will continue to work together to uphold laws governing the cross-border movement of cannabis, carrying any cannabis or cannabis products, legal or illegal, across Canada's border, will remain a serious criminal offence, with individuals convicted of engaging in such activities liable for prosecution. 39. Will this slow the movement of goods and people across the Canada-U.S. border? It's getting slow. Specific attention will be paid to ensuring that Canadians and visitors to Canada are aware of the absolute prohibition against carrying cannabis or cannabis products across international borders, and that doing so is a serious criminal offence. This will be part of the government's public education campaign. Travelers should also remain aware that while some states have legalized recreational cannabis, cannabis does remain a controlled substance at the federal level in the United States. Travelers seeking to entry into the U.S. may be inadmissible if they admit to having consumed cannabis in Canada or disclose to U.S. authorities plans to purchase or consume cannabis while in the U.S. So when you're at the border... Don't tell them that you've ever smoked pot. And when they say, why are you coming to Colorado? Don't tell them you're going to a pot festival. Number 40, the workplace. How will legalization impact the workplace? The task force heard from employers who expressed concern with the impact on workplace safety, particularly for safety-sensitive industries such as health and the oil and gas industry. While the legalization of cannabis has highlighted this concern, Impairment in the workplace is not a new issue and is not limited to cannabis. This issue has been a topic of ongoing dialogue among federal, provincial, and territorial ministers of labor. That's kind of another lame answer. Last one, folks. This is it. Industrial hemp. How is industrial hemp implicated in this legislation? For anyone who doesn't know, hemp is the male plant. Cannabis comes from the female plant. When the male plant fertilizes the female plant, the buds go to shit and they turn into a bunch of seeds, which you can then replant. You never know what you're going to get, if it's going to be a male or a female, until the buds start to show out of these little armpit hairs that come out of the corner. So, ooh, under this legislation, the Federal Oversight for Hemp will be moved from the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act to the new Cannabis Act. That's kind of cool. In response to a growing and rapidly changing industry, the government is committed to ongoing reviews of the existing system with the goal of reducing regulatory burdens for industry and streamlining processes. In fact, changes have already been made to the oversight of hemp to better align regulation of industrial hemp with the demonstrated low public health and safety risk of the crop. For example, we have eliminated the need for THC testing for most crops and adjusted licensing renewal dates to align with product sales cycles. That's it today, folks. If you like what I'm doing here, if you want to donate, you can click on one of these buttons here that has a donate button somewhere. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would really help me out. That's it. I hope you enjoyed all of these little things that I just did for everyone so you don't have to read. I know a lot of you don't like reading. I didn't used to like reading. Now I do. So I do it for you. All for you. Subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Peace.
peace, love, and light. Namaste, and all that other good noise. I am out for another day. Goodbye.